What's up, guys? It's Scar here from the Score Esports here with Tony Gray, the coach of CLG. Uh, why don't I let you introduce yourself? I'm the coach of CLG. <laughs> oh, but I meant to introduce your 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 background, like. Uh, Yes, like uh, okay. So let me let me just play this way. Tony uh, Tony Gray is the two-time uh, NA split winner for CLG. Last two splits. Um, currently joining us. I have a lot of things to ask, Mr. Mr. Gray, because uh, honestly, CLG is not doing too hot this split, uh, especially from a two-time winning team. There's just there's just higher expectations. So now that you aren't meeting these expectations, what's the first thing that you're doing? What's the thing that, behind the scenes, just what are you put, putting your efforts into? Well, I think uh, first we haven't had like the best results like toward our expectations because mostly in the past, I don't know, it was like a month or two at a time where we were mainly focused on competing versus like improving. And all of the teams were in boot camps, constantly improving, you know, their systems, how efficient they were and just constantly like trying to improve as a team where we were like trying to compete at the highest level as a team, which is like, I just see those as two very different goals. So when we came out in the end, it was like we had a break, came back, all of these teams were already warmed up, fresh with like their really solid and efficient systems to learn and improve. So we're playing a bit of catch up right now. So I think we, we have gotten a pretty solid hold now of like what we want to do to improve, but we're still, you know, trying to figure stuff out. Like we're we're pulling in one of our analysts to the house this week to see if that will help with a lot of the uh, the stuff that we go through. So, okay. Usually, when people think of CLG, they think of CLG as a team that is really really good at split pushing. Uh, they run double TP, uh, and especially if you look back toward MSI, you guys are really famous using two TPs at once. Uh, now the Jet meta has kind of shifted toward Bruiser's top lane and a style that I feel like CLG should play very, very well. Uh, what differs from this kind of type of meta than the one that CLG used to play in where they excelled with Darshan? Well, I'd say the, the biggest difference between this meta and the MSI meta is before it was like, while it was pretty like Bruiser y tank, like not necessarily tank tops, but like Bruiser tops, like Echo Poppy, like those are really team fight but safe top laners. So a lot of the early game plans revolved around bottom lane. Now a lot of it revolves around, you know, once again, the other side of the map. So we trained essentially for two months on bottom side of the map and pressuring bottom, learning how to pressure bottom better and like all of these small things so we could beat, you know, all of these really good teams. But the meta has like completely shifted to the other side of the map. So we're just kind of, you know, regaining that right now. And I think also it's pretty important to get mid control right now. Like mostly the mid laners have like a really, really high impact because the side laners are so strong. So yeah, it's just we're, we're kind of relearning, pretty much. Okay. Afro in his post-game interview just said how he isn't very good at doing mid lane control right now. And he, he calls it the Trinity, right? The jungle, the support, and I think the, the, the Triforce. Right, right, right. Uh, and he, tr he, w he said he's not very good at mid lane control. Do you feel like that's the biggest thing holding you guys back right now? Because as a team, you guys aren't able to pressure mid when it really calls for it in, the, in this certain meta? Yeah, I think, I think too often we kind of went with like the strategy where it was like, Okay, Jay, you're going to be on a safe wave clearing mid laner that's not really going to have any pressure or do anything until later on. You can, you know, either split push later or you can, uh, you know, just poke and then be a big factor in team fights. But what we've kind of realized is that that's a pretty big strategy flaw, right? So we need to be able to excel at every, every piece of the game, right? So mid control is the thing that we can definitely improve at the most. Um, and I'd say it's probably one of our weak points, but we're steadily focusing on it and learning it. So we should be pretty good at it pretty soon. Uh, I like to categorize different teams different ways. Like some teams are very uh, top line carry focused. Like I always thought of CLG as like, you know, the split push team, the team that can pressure 4-1 uh, or even 1-3-1. One, one. Even now, it feels like all of your practice is on this 1-3-1 one, one type of style. Uh, do you feel like focusing so much on that type of style really limits your team to be adaptable? Or do you feel like being able to be so good at one thing is your key to winning? I think being adaptable is probably the most important thing, especially since uh, we, we spent a lot of time at like doing the international competition and we kind of realized the strengths of being able to change your, your style. Uh, we beat a lot of 1-4 teams with like 1-3-1 play and like, we would just counter compositions and it would be like a really high impact 
play to essentially just like change strategically in game. But kind of like limiting yourself to one style is just bad in the long run, I guess. If you want to be world champions, you can't really limit yourself to one style because in the end, you know, SKT will play one style that beats your one style. So uh, a lot of times I see CLG running uh, I think CLG is one of the first teams to run toward the utility style and and then they never picked up Lucian and then they, they always prioritized Ezreal. And now Ezreal kind of made a complete comeback You with CLG in the forefront and Morals is picking up Ezreal. You see more Ezreal play from the rest of the teams in LCS. What really made them come back, you know? Like what made them a strong pick again after like this whole entire revolution of like utility into, or uh, Lucian into utility into where we are now? I mean, the pick just makes sense in general if you think about it. Like, bottom side control is like less prevalent. I get, like, every, Ezreal won't be abused as much. He won't be dove as much. He won't be pressured nearly as much. And then, uh, mainly, we'll play off the top side, obviously. So you want a safe AD carry that can do all of those things. So he can safely farm, scale. And then when we do eventually either want to put him mid or do whatever with him, right? He's going to have strong poke or mid control if we put him against any anchor mid lane. So he can always poke out anyone. So it just seems like a safe pick that can do pretty well into everything. So. A lot of times I see CLG's comps, and just recently, since bruisers are coming back, you lose a lot of initiation potential from the top lane, and so you have to kind of make up for it in, a lot of teams have been making up for it in the AD and the jungle roles, especially because range supports are now being more meta, and it's very difficult to initiate on something like Karma, you know, or become the main initiator there. Uh, how has your team kind of had to work around that? Because outside of Bard, I've always thought of Afro, uh, Bard and Morgana, I've always thought of Aphromoo as like a very premier, like, uh, Alistar player and I've noticed that generally he has had to play less off of that and more towards other like more supportive style roles How do you guys like have you guys had any difficulty starting fights? Um, I would say that There are some difficulties starting fights, but typically it's pretty comp dependent um, some teams play Long range like we we're a team that also plays pretty long range stuff typically so we don't need that engage most of the time, most of the time we can bait their engage or you know play slow and just keep poking and kiting. So I don't think engage is 100% necessary as like a comp goal, but I think it's it, it fits a lot of scenarios. And uh, yeah, we we similarly like you said, kind of like roll whoever is like not playing an engage, we typically pick the other role and engage. So let's just delve into game two a little bit. Generally, I felt like, like this series, you guys had it on lock, but the second game was a little bit uh, close. Uh, you guys brought back a comp I haven't seen in a long time. It was a Protect the AD comp with Janna Karma. And usually, if you want to play with a low range threat like Lucian, you have to have a lot, a lot of faith in your AD. Uh, why did the game like turn out to be so, like I guess, sloppy? Uh, and why you guys couldn't close even with, I felt like, uh, a decent lead? I would say... 100% it was vision control that was like the the biggest issue there. I felt like we pressured the map pretty well. We knew how to push them into certain areas of the map. You know, we wanted to bait them into the Baron and then back off. Uh, just many times during the game we had like lapses of vision where it was like, okay, we wanted to walk left side, go straight to the Baron, disappear, either, you know, look for the pick or go the Baron. And it was like either they saw we were not doing Baron, so it didn't matter, or they knew where we were sitting for the pick, or we tried to rush the Baron, and they just walked in where we didn't have vision, so we didn't see them. Or it was like, we didn't see Victor on the right side, so Trevor tried to assassinate the Braum, got one shot by the Victor. So it was just like, it was a lot of small problems, I'd say, mainly based around vision. And I would say that P1 is a pretty good team at vision control and counterplay. That's probably their biggest strengths, is just standing in the right area where they know people will walk, and then just like looking for a pick there. That's what they did that I thought was the strongest for uh, what they did throughout the entire series. Uh, why did you guys end up banning Shen this series? Uh, I know it's a lot of teams are putting a lot of Shen priority. Is there something about Shen that makes them really stand out? Um, I just feel like their team makes less plays and has less power with uh, without the Shen ulti. That's about it. Uh, there's been a lot of criticism about Hui's level of play. 
throughout, especially this split. Uh, some of it may be unwarranted. Maybe a, I, I'd, I'd say a large amount of it is unwarranted. But what is your general thoughts about these statements? Like, obviously, I'm sure the players must have heard of it. The coach especially has to be, like, have, have his ears to the ground, must have heard of it as well. What are you doing on your end to make sure that Hui is, or, like, I just want to know, what are you doing on your end? Um, we've been experimenting a little bit. Uh, and trying to figure out what necessarily best works out for Jay. I know like Jay mainly looks bad, I'd say, because we don't pressure his lane. Like that's usually why his lane results look really poor because we put him in these really weird situations where he's like almost consistently 1v2 with no mid, mid vision because we want to prioritize our side lane so heavily. So in that series, it definitely showed that we, we put more resources toward him and he was able to like uh, perform with it. Um, other than that, I would say, we just have to uh, focus on the mastery of champion for him. Uh, when, when he does master certain champs, I feel like he's going to 1v5 most games. Outside of like very random spell usage problems that he does have every now and again, like the Azir ulti that people like constantly point out, right? But uh, I feel pretty confident whenever he plays any of the champions that he has mastered. And all we have to do is strive to find more champions for him to master. If I'm sure the biggest question on people's minds as a CLG fan, uh, they want to ask you, and I want to ask you, what what is next? Like for you guys, what are you focusing on going into the coming weeks? What's the number one priority for you guys to make sure you guys are back at a top team? I was actually in the media lounge today, and Jack, the owner of C9, just there. He even said. He's like, I wonder when CLG is going to come back. So everyone is kind of expecting you guys to be a higher level team than you are. What are your steps to get there? Right now, we're just trying to make the process as efficient as possible. So obviously, our results haven't been so good. So we're trying to be less result-based and more uh, process-based, uh, trying to figure out what's the most efficient way to learn you know, how to best attack our problems and actually grow from them. And uh, I think that'll be the way that we can come back, yeah. Oh, do you have any final words? Any shouts to your uh, couple fans remaining in the CLG bandwagon? <laughs> yes. Thank you for supporting us. Even though we've had a pretty slow start, um, we're definitely going to come back soon, for sure. We're going to bring in an analyst, like I already said, to uh, make sure that we're on top of our game. And other than that, shout out to our sponsors. <laughs> Astro, Ivy Power, DX Racer, and Twitch. With a, with a sponsor route like that, how can you go wrong? It's Scar from the Score Esports. You can find more content online or on our mobile app. Thank you guys. Hope you guys have a nice day.